Good morning. Welcome back to the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, and I am joined again by Pastor Brian Wolfmuller. His uh, his YouTube channel is Pastor Brian Wolfmuller. You should definitely check it out and follow him, subscribe, like all of the videos, and uh, make him real happy uh, because he is joining us again to answer your questions. Uh, if you have questions that you want Pastor Wolfmuller to answer because he's real smart, like uh, you can drop them in the comments or email them to content at higherthings.org. Pastor Wolfmuller, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Awesome. It's uh, got another fun one for you today. Uh, here we go. You ready? Yes. All right. All of these are my questions because I am nervous and struggling to answer. Uh, so, so you're going to help me. Pastor, do you think God is frustrated so many people question him? <laughs> no, uh, I, I don't think so. I think the Lord loves it. I mean, so, so we, the chief worship of God is faith, which is basically saying, okay, to whatever the Lord says, you know, faith is just believing his promises. So, so if we take uh, questioning the Lord as questioning his truthfulness or his goodness or something like this, then, uh, then maybe the Lord is frustrated because that's the, you know, unbelief. But when you read the Psalms, how many of the prayers that the Lord himself inspired and teaches us to pray are questions. How long, oh Lord? I mean, this is the question. In fact, Moses in his Moses wrote one of the Psalms, Psalm 90, and he teaches us to pray how long. And David prays how long. And saw, I think Asaph and the sons of Korah, the only writer of the book of, uh, of, of the Psalms that didn't pray a how long prayer was Solomon. All the other ones have a how long, oh Lord. And Solomon probably should have prayed it. <laughs> it would have probably done him some good. <laughs> So to realize that we're living in the time of prayers offered and prayers answered always, I mean, because if we had the answer, we wouldn't be praying for it. So our lives are in this, our lives are in this time of wrestling with the Lord, that that's, that's how the Lord is dealing with us. So we pray, how long, how long will you hide your face for us? How long will our enemies triumph over us? Uh, even Jesus prayed, uh, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So we question the Lord, but the Christian question is in the context of faith and prayer. So there's a difference between like, uh, like uh, I don't think the Lord exists or I think he's ridiculous and I'm not even going to trouble with him, that kind of question versus the Christian wrestling with God. So, so, so the picture of prayer in the Bible is that wrestling. The, the, the Canaanite woman is a great example Lord have mercy. My daughter has a demon. Jesus answers her. He doesn't say anything. And then he says to the disciples, I came only for the lost children in the house of Israel. And then he turns to her and says, it's not right to take the food and give it to the dogs. Lord help me. She, per she uh, um, persists, but even maybe a more profound picture is Jacob. Who's coming back to his family lands with his two wives, his children, his family, all this herds. He knows his brother Esau is ready to, wallop him and he so he sends his family across the jabbok and he's there on the shore and jesus shows up and if you just okay so before you turn the page you just stop. i like this experiment whenever reading the bible i say what would i guess would happen next okay so here's jacob by himself at night and jesus shows up and what's going to happen well jesus he's going to fall on his face and worship him or build an altar to him or the Lord is going to appear and speak to him or something like that. Something very holy is about to happen, but that's not, then you turn the page and it's not what happens. Jesus just, you know, Attack John him. Cena, boom. <laughs> and they, and they are wrestling with each other. I just, you know, you think like Hulk Hogan or I, I don't know, maybe you think Olympic, they're just, they're, in the mud and Jesus has Jacob's face in the dirt, you know, grrr, and then he tries to run away. And then Jacob grabs his ankle and Jesus falls over like this. And they're back and forth. Let me go. Jesus says, let go of me. I'm not going to let you go till you give me a blessing. And then what's your name? No, it's Israel, which means wrestles with God. So the Lord changed in because you've struggled with God and with man and you've lived. And then Jesus touches his hip and knocks it out of joint and says, all right, take this, you know, I've just been messing with you the whole time, but this is how it is that Jesus, he, this is our whole lives. Jesus throws us in the ring and he loves it. 
Do I think he doesn't like being in the ring with us? No, that's what he loves most of all. So we wrestle with the Lord. That's what it means to be Israel. Right. I mean, it, it's not even just then for those biblical characters or those stories because God gives you his word because he wants you to hear the comfort. Um, mm -hmm. It's the, the Isaiah 40, comfort, comfort my people said that you are mm -hmm. God. He, he wants you to, it, it's not whether or not you have frustrations or questions, excuse me. It's, it's where you take them. He, it's, it's not that, well, ideally, yeah, you shouldn't question these things, but mm -hmm. the Lord knows you're gonna. So we want you to go to his word, hear his comfort. Mm -hmm. He wants you to receive it. Jesus even keeps going back to, to wrestle, even with the Pharisees. The, the only frustrations we really start to see is when they hear about the mercy and they want nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that's the, um, that's the thing that breaks God's heart is that we, is that our questioning of him would push us away from the joy that he wants us to have. But the, this is, for whatever reason, that's how the Lord has made. He comes in humility so that he is rejectable. It's, you know, the Calvinists have the idea of the irresistibility of grace, but grace by its very nature is resistible. I mean, j just as Jesus was killable. I mean, it's crazy to think that the reason why Joseph and Mary had to take the baby Jesus to Egypt is because if those swords would have found him, they would have killed him. I mean, he was mortal and his humility and his mortality is, is all part of his questionability, but, but so the Lord becomes doubtable precisely to save us. It's the, it's the, the doubtability of God is part of his work to save us. So, um, so it's kind of all baked into the cake, which we say, God be praised. Right. So it, no, he's not frustrated that he gets to offer you mercy. No, he's not frustrated that he gets to remind you of his comfort new every day. Yeah. Wonderful. That's right. Well, that was a good one. All right. Well, thanks, Pastor. I really appreciate you sticking around to help me out here. You got it, Harrison. All right. Well, have a great day. All right. You too.